Hello, I'm Victoria Cleanthus, Community Officer with Green Space Information for Greater London, also known as Giggle. Giggle is the local environmental record centre for Greater London, which means that we curate, share and mobilise data on the environment to ensure that London's nature is considered, understood and protected. To that end, we have been proud to partner with the Zoological Society for London, People's Trust for Endangered Species and the London Wildlife Trust on the London Waterfall Recovery Programme, as funded by the Mayor of London's Rewell Fund. Giggle's role in this programme so far has been to provide the most up-to-date data that we have on waterfall and American mink distributions in London, and will be to collate any future data streams that we find, which is where you and this short video come in. So this video is designed to take you through the process of submitting a formal species record, which don't worry if you've never done that before, the form will explain it all. Uh, for any casual sightings that you might find while you're out and about on London waterways. The data will be shared with the National Waterfall Monitoring Program and will be combined within the Giggle Species Database, which will eventually find its way onto the MBN Atlas. But don't worry, none of your personal details will be shared and any waterfall locations will be kept at a very low resolution to protect them. This video is designed to be used with the brilliant identification information that Emily Sabin from the People's Trust for Endangered Species provided. So if you can go back and rewatch her video to keep yourself in the know about what to look for. There's also a brief guide that you'll find with the form. Um, so don't worry if you've missed anything. To find the form, if you navigate to the the Giggle website, which you can find by searching for Green Space Information for Greater London or Giggle London. I won't just come up with Giggle, unfortunately. And if you hover over the Submit Records menu and scroll to the bottom, or if you click the Submit Records button at the top and then navigate to the Waterfall Recovery Program on the right hand side, it will take you to the Waterfall Recovery Program web page. So we've got a nice couple of pictures at the top, some background about the project, and then at the very bottom, if you click Waterfall and Mink Casual Recording Form, it opens up a recording form for you. Now, the first thing to do with this form is to read through and accept our privacy policy. This details how we will use your information and that we won't be sharing it with any third parties. So within the form, we'll ask for your full name to be able to complete a species record, which requires a named observer. And we will ask for your email address so that we can come back to you with any questions we might have about your record. So you won't be able to proceed unless you click that yes button. First things first, do you wish to submit a waterfall or American mink record? A waterfall record will bring up this waterfall identification guide, which again builds on the brilliant information that Emily Sabin has shared and which mostly can be found within this additional PTES, National Waterfall Monitoring Program ID guide. So it briefly discusses the habitat type you can find, the how to identify a waterfall and distinguish it from a brown rat, how to distinguish waterfall droppings from those of a brown rat, how to distinguish burrows from those of a field vole, and how to distinguish feeding sites from those of a field vole as well, and a nest. So to begin, if you have observed several different signs, such as a burrow and a dropping on the same day in approximately the same location, so around 100 meters apart or less, we'd love it if you could just submit a single record. But if you've observed different things on different days or the same day, but more than 100 meters apart. If you could provide them as separate records, ideally with a separate location, that would be brilliant. This just gives us a better idea of exactly the distribution of water voles. So perhaps I've seen a burrow and I've seen some droppings. This will then bring up uh, questions on how many I observed. So for example, let's do one and one. And then if you can provide any extra details on your observation. So context is really important. And particularly if you've just seen burrows, as much context as you can provide, because there are lots of other animals that create similar signs in the environment. So yeah, details on what kind of habitat you found it in. If you've seen something you think is a waterfall, details on behavior are really important as this is a key way of identifying a waterfall. So next up is when was it observed? You can provide these in two formats if you can't exactly remember the date. Um, but let's say it was last Saturday. And then location name, 
really useful for us if you can be as specific as possible and you also have the option of providing a location coordinate. So I'm going to suggest that I saw something at Walthamstow Wetlands and around Reservoir Path. And then if you want to provide a location coordinate, you can do that in several ways. So Google Maps will provide an easting and northing. Um, my personal preference is to use Grid Reference Finder, which is linked at the bottom of the page. And if you just type in your location or if you navigate around the map, for example, right clicking on the map will bring up a point. Let's say this is where I saw my water vole. You can provide the grid reference as a 10 or six figure one. So copy and paste that into location coordinate. And next it'll take you on to being able to share a photo. So photos, again, really useful, providing extra context um, and will be really helpful in helping us to ascertain whether or not something that you've seen could actually be due to a waterfall or due to a different organism. But key things to remember are that you have to stay safe. If anything looks a bit slippery or a little bit unstable, please don't attempt to take a photo. Um, we can just use your word. Um, but if you do manage to get something, please keep make sure it's in focus, that what you're trying to show is visible, and if possible, provide something for scale. So for example, here, this two pence piece shows that these droppings are likely to be from a field vole, not from a water vole. And so any if you do upload a photo, which we can do by just dragging and dropping here, it will ask you whether you're comfortable with us using your photos for our social media or our communications work. You can say yes or no. If you say yes, this will apply to all future photos that you upload. So for each record, that's a maximum of five. You can also provide your Instagram handle if you'd like us to tag in any posts that we make. So you can either choose to submit another record or you can just complete the form. If you submit another record, it will take you back through the form, and if you are submitting a record of American mink, the American mink identification guide will pop back up, and then everything else is exactly the same, and you'll get a total record count at the bottom there, just so you can remind yourself how many you've exactly submitted. But I'm going to go back. I don't want to submit another record. And then finally, we just ask for information about you. So this is to complete the species record. Um, so this just means that we can confirm that it's all full. And then if possible, you can tell us where you found the record. So this could be on the Giga website or anything like that. And if you would like to submit any other records through the Giga website, you can just click the button here. Or if you'd like to sign up to the Google newsletter, click the button here. Last thing to do, just submit. Thank you very much.